Hello there, everyone. Um, welcome to my second Let's Draw. Today I'm going to be drawing Chise and Elias from one of my new favorite animes, The Ancient Magus Bride. And if you've noticed, this video is going to be a little more ASMR than I wanted it to be, because it's currently 1.15 in the morning, and I've been doing all sorts of things for school, and something prevalent that happened recently was that my fucking roommate forced all of us to watch the Emoji Movie. It was fucking garbage. But subsequently, a silver lining to that was that in my animation slash storyboarding class, we were given an assignment to write an essay about a 3D movie that had come out in the last two years. Most people went for quality films such as Moana, Rococo, Kubo, something like that. No, I chose to turn the formula on its head and write my paper about a really bad movie. So without further ado, Jennifer Parisi, storyboarding and animation, animated movie critique and written analysis. Titled, I'd rate this a poop emoji out of five. Let's go. Number one. The emoji movie taught me everything you shouldn't do to make a successful movie. The plot is so boring and convoluted that I think even the children watching this would be confused. The movie also misses the point of what an animated movie is supposed to be. It's not just an excuse to grab a bunch of A-list actors to voice act for the characters, nor to play a popular song every opportunity you get. A lot of 3D animated movies nowadays, by Sony Productions in particular, treat animated movies in this disrespectful manner just to make some money. Number 2. It was very clear that the message the Emoji Movie was trying to send was be yourself, but it wasn't conveyed well at all. Jean, the main character, isn't content with his purpose of being a meh emoji. He likes expressing his emotions, and by the end of the movie they utilize animated gifs so that he can be expressive as he wants. However, there's too much happening at one time for the main idea to be clear. It's so buried under the intense references to pop culture that you don't remember what the point of the movie is. At some point as I watched, I tried viewing it from the mind of a child. Children are definitely the target audience for the movie, but I think even they wouldn't be able to take any meaning from it. All you remember is the characters running around from place to place making jokes about the internet. Number 3. The only thing I liked about the movie was this one scene that involved Instagram. Jean's mother is looking for him and finds herself in the Instagram app, which in this movie is treated like its own world. While inside, she enters a photo that behaves like a frozen memory. It takes place where the picture was taken and everything in the photo is still. It's also taken at sunset, so the colors were very pleasing to look at. Later, her husband finds her there and swoons her by changing the filter of the photo. This changes the color scheme of the environment, which I thought was pretty clever. Number four. I really just hate the amount of commercialism in this movie. As I mentioned, the plot is so boring and minimal that it is completely overtaken by the amount of commercials present in the movie. They traverse through the worlds of Just Dance, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox, Candy Crush, Twitch, and Twitter, just to name a few. You're bombarded with references to memes, pop culture, games, apples, celebrities, viral videos, and on and on and on. It was so frustrating to sit through this entire movie knowing that the only interest in mind while making it was money. And Sir Patrick Stewart was a poop emoji. Number 5. I think what irks me most about the emoji movie is just the idea of there being an emoji movie. That was the thing that was most prevalent in my mind as I watched. Perhaps if the plot was strong enough to make the characters lovable and memorable, then I'd be able to forgive the idea of them just being little circles with legs. But the fact that there was not enough effort to make them anything more than just emojis is what bothers me the most. The filmmakers knew what they were doing and they only used emojis as characters because they knew that little kids would come see it. As I watched, I did a little experiment in the back of my mind to secure my pessimism. Let's say you take the core ideas of the movie and replace them with things that have nothing to do with an emoji. Let's say the main characters are just people, Textopolis is just a generic city, and all the pop culture references are gone. Would it still be a solid movie without those things? No. The answer is no. The plot isn't strong enough, the characters' motives aren't relatable enough, and there's not enough sentiment overall. 
Jean's struggle to be more than just a meh emoji is symbolic in theory, but the way they represent it and everyone else's goals in the movie is just poorly done and not relatable. Number 6. In terms of motion, I don't have much to say. Things moved fine and believably. The way the emojis ran from things was very cartoony and exaggerated as it should have been, but there's no real shots of trees blowing in the wind or ocean waves or birds flying or cars driving or anything like that that leaves a significant memory of motion in my mind. Number 7. There were actually two very specific technical things I took note of as I watched. The first thing was the use of squash and stretch. It's a technique used by animators to make someone's movements that much more exaggerated. The emoji movie squatch and stretches the living hell out of their characters. Nearly every time they run or jump or even talk is squashed and stretched. It's so overly exaggerated and it leaves the impression that that was the only strategy the animators knew of. When you use the same method over and over and over again, it's obvious to anyone that's all you knew how to do. The second thing that bothered me was just the aesthetic design of Textopolis, which is where the emojis live. The sky was really empty. There were maybe two or three clouds in the sky at all times, and that really bothered me. I suppose that they were trying to make it look digital and not as realistic as the world outside the phone, but there were other ways to go about it than that. The sky doesn't have to be so clearly empty, the buildings don't all have to be the exact same design, and the apps they travel to should have been better designed than they were. In terms of lighting, textures, rendering, color, and style, I would honestly say that this movie lacks all these things heavily. The only colorful things were really the emojis themselves and the real world outside the phone. The characters are just circles, so there's hardly any noticeable texture to them, and there really isn't a style, it's all just so generic and not unique in any way. Number 8. I can honestly say that I don't like any of these characters, but visually I liked Addie the best. She's the girl from the real world that the phone's owner has a crush on. Her design is cute and not the typical way the girl of interest is usually depicted. She has dark hair and doesn't dress in an overly pretty way. She's believable and cute, so I like her. As a side note, I did admire the representation of diversity in the real world of the movie. A lot of the kids that go to school with the phone's owner have various skin tones and body types. I would have greatly preferred to watch a movie starring them, instead of admiring them from afar in the seven minutes that they were actually on screen. Number 9. As I said, I don't like any of the characters, but my least favorite of them all was definitely Jailbreak. She is the one in the group who's able to lead them to the firewall as a means to escape to the iCloud. However, the filmmaker so extremely tried to give her all these lines about feminism and women's rights that it came across as disingenuous. No one in this movie ever said anything that belittled women or even touched the topic of women's rights. Yet there was at least three times where Jean would say something and she'd respond with, That's so typical of a man to say, is it because I'm a woman and you don't think I can fend for myself? Blech. As a strong advocate for equality amongst genders, it is incredibly infuriating when filmmakers haphazardly make the girl in the group overly preachy to try to relate to the female audience. First of all, her actions should be what make us decide she's a strong female character. It shouldn't be slapped in our faces by her constantly shouting about women's rights. Secondly, it is so insulting to women to give this character the quote, annoying feminist trait. It neglects all the work we've done in real life to create equality among men and women. It gives us even more of a bad reputation for being annoying about our beliefs. How are we supposed to be taken seriously when we're depicted like this? And finally, number 10. To close my thoughts on this disgusting film, I want to talk about the comment it makes on the human condition. The first thing I'll say is that its depiction of real humans is quite accurate. We are constantly on our phones, and what's in them seems to be all that matters, especially to younger people. Texting someone back has become a crucial role in the relationships between people. If you don't respond quickly or if you send something weird, the person you're texting immediately thinks less of you. You've insulted them by doing this, and that can alter the entire relationship you two share. The second thing that I'll say about the human condition is how it's depicted in these personified emojis. Even though its delivery is incredibly weak, the idea they were trying to get across is to always be true to who you are. Jailbreak struggles with her accepting her role as the princess emoji and tries to conceal it, but she embraces it by the end and she isn't embarrassed anymore. It was actually painful for me to write the above paragraph because of how weak this plot is. 
It's obvious to see that the be yourself message was there, but it's so incredibly buried by so many different things that it just becomes lost in the end. For instance, Jean's goal is to become more than just a meh emoji. That's why he goes on this adventure in the first place. No one accepts him when he tries to express his emotions. But the climax of the movie is that he's the only working emoji left, and he makes an animated gif of himself. The phone's owner's crush sees it and is so impressed by it that she goes out with him. But if they had the capability to make a gif all along, why didn't they just do that to begin with? There was actually a scene in the beginning where Jean is being scanned before he sent us a text message. During that process, you have to stay still to be scanned properly. But he has a nervous breakdown and starts jumping around frantically while he's being scanned. Because of this, when he's sent as a text, he has a nervous expression instead of a meh expression. Then at the end, when they make the gif, he's moving around again, but this time it captured all of his movements. So why did it work this time, but not the first time? And why is Jean the only one out of the thousands of emojis that isn't content with being his assigned emotion? Why is he the only one who can make other faces? How has no one in however long Textopolis has been around ever hated their job? The plot would have been so much stronger if the message was shared by a bunch of characters, not just this one random exception to the rule. Jesus Christ, I hate this movie. And that's the end of my paper. I have yet to receive my grade on this paper so far, but I'm looking forward to it because I was the only one in my class who wrote this much, and I'm really proud of what I, what I did here. To all of my younger fan people who watch my videos, if you're thinking I've been too hard on the Emoji Movie, you're wrong. You're just wrong. This movie sucks and it's not worth your time. Please go watch a, an actual quality film like Moana or Kubo or Coco or something that isn't the fucking Emoji Movie. I hate that this film exists. Why does this film exist? Who the fuck sat down and was like, You know what would be a good idea for a movie? What if we take the little things in the phone and fucking make them run around and do shit? Except there's all this stuff about feminism and like, I don't like who I am and fucking... <laughs> and we could get Sir Patrick Stewart to play the Emoji Movie. We could get we could fucking TJ Miller. Oh my god. We'll sell, it, we'll sell so many tickets if we get CJ Miller to be the man emoji. What the fuck is a man emoji? Nobody says that. Why couldn't, like, he be called a bored emoji? Like, why is it meh? That's so... It's not a word. Why is the f I don't like this movie. I don't like this movie. And my teacher was like, when I initially told her that this is what I wanted to write about, she was like, ah, oh, fuck, now I'm gonna have to watch the Emoji movie as well. And I was like, no, don't do it. it you will actually want to die. I want to die. I don't know who I am anymore. Like, honestly, people ask me sometimes, why did you get into animation? Why do you do animation? It's honestly because of spite from films like this. Literally, I'm not kidding you. Like, I think about this movie all the time, and it, it, that spite inspires me to do good things. I'm like, I have to be an animator because otherwise these fuckheads are just gonna keep making stupid shit like this. I need to save the industry. Oh my god! I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed my finest work. I hope you have a good one. I hope my drawing looks okay. Um, I haven't finished it upon recording this video. And I hope you have a good one. I am going to go to bed for a while. But yeah, see you guys later. Wink, wink.